day, it made three hundred sixty-nine million worldwide. Wait, Spider-Man second day, it made how much? Three hundred and sixty-nine million worldwide. It was interesting. I was revisiting a documentary done in two thousand four about Return of the Jedi, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and how when one of those films made six point eight the first day, that was a big deal. Yeah, that was a big. Yeah, well, that was. It was different. The dollar was stronger, and it was different back then. I guess. Yeah. So it's you weren't paying eighteen dollars to go see a movie. That is true too. You know, that is true too. And so, the world release was kind of broken up. Within yes. Months. Yes. Of each other. It wasn't yes. all at once. That's totally true. That's absolutely right. Um, I remember when Superman two came out. Um, Superman two came out in Australia first, December nineteen eighty. And it wasn't shown in the U.S. until June of 81. Oh, wow. That's so that was a six-month six month dif- difference. I mean, but you're right. With t- today, the way things are with technology and everything's done so fast, they, they um, release it at the same time. I guess it's all be- also because of the piracy. Okay. I think that's a good way to combat pa- to the piracy of the uh, movies, you know? Right, right, right. Because if it's all out at once, right, right. So, so what's your take on Spider Man? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you um, haven't seen it yet? Oh. No, I, 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 I got lucky enough to see Captain America this weekend. <laughs> Every time I went, it was sold out. Wow. Every time I went to go see Cap, it was sold out. It was sold out. It was number one for three weeks. Then it uh, went fell to second because of that Cameron Diaz movie, The Other Woman. Mm-hmm. That was last week, but I knew that wasn't gonna last because Spider Man was coming out Friday, so right. that didn't last long. Right. But I was able to see Captain America, and it was great. It really was. Um, it was it's it's a, it's a good political thriller. You don't have to be too much of a superhero fan to watch it, because okay. it dealt a lot with. Um, the surveillance and how they're infringing on our 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 rights. Right. And uh, at, and it was cool because at the beginning Nick Fury is, is so government type he's defending it. Then by the end of the movie, you see uh, Nick had a change of attitude. Hmm. And um, it was very entertaining. But there's a good Easter egg in that uh, movie. You know what what they mean by Easter eggs? Mm-mm. It, well, it's a surprise. Okay. That, that's what they refer to in the film as a surprise, uh-huh. as a as a little sneak, you know, as a little tease. They call those Easter eggs because around Easter, that that um, it's a for the those who are watching and don't know, it's a Christian holiday, and uh, they they color they dye eggs and hide them around. The kids go around, and they find it, you know. Um, a lot of times it's plastic eggs with a now, gift in. Now, but, let me guess. This surprise has something to do with the next movie. I don't know. Okay. Because who they referenced was, I, I, it caught me off guard. Um, they referenced Dr. Banner a few times. Bruce Banner was the Hulk. Mm-hmm. But then they brought up Stephen Strange. Dr. Strange? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you that's think, what I You think he's going to be in the next well, I I heard that, that that a movie was in development. I guess now it's uh, I knew I knew a movie was in pre-development. I guess now it's in development. If they right. brought it up. Well, it's funny when these movies come out, how you're like, oh, oh at least back in the day, oh, I hope they do another one. Hope they do another one, before they even release one, you already know it's a trilogy. Oh yeah. You know, so it's it's. Yeah. Oh man, it's so corporate. At least hide it from us, but it's so corporate to the point where I don't know, it's just not as fun. I love the well, characters, but it's just not as fun. Well, well, remember what we uh, we we, uh, we announced a few weeks ago. We said that uh, Disney signed a deal with New York, and they were doing the four TV shows: Daredevil, Power Man, mm-hmm. uh, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. But they were also doing a Defenders movie, right? And Stephen Strange is the leader in the Defenders. 
as far as I remember, right? Okay. So that, so maybe would, make, was, that would make a good segue. Maybe they were tying it into the Defender movie. Hmm. Well, well, at least it sounds a lot better than what they do with, with, with S.H.I.E.L.D. Because it's a little too much, you know, going back and forth with, you know, um, well, what we know as the original Defenders, at least in the movie version, um, not mm. Defenders, I mean the um, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, but they literally can spin off to to so many different characters. So there's a lot of possibility there, but then it becomes overwhelming. It's just too much. Yeah. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has improved. It's improved since uh, Thor 2 came out. Mm -hmm. They tied it into the movies, you know? Right. And then it really got better when Captain America, the Captain movie coming out. Because then they had, you know, the Hydra agents and uh, and Shield on the show, and it really got interesting. But I'm like, I feel like they, it, it's too little, too late. Why why they take so long? Right. You know. Yeah, the last six episodes have been good, but those first thirteen were like, <laughs> you, you know, you, you're watching the clock. You know, is the show over? You know, you now we'll see how it goes from there. I did like it oh, on uh, on Shield. They um they asked uh, the uh, agents. They were testing them, and one of the uh, with a polygraph machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked the agent um, Simmons, the female. Well, they asked all the agents the same question, and it was, if you were on an island and a box washed up on shore, what would you want to be in the box? Mm -hmm. And you know, a couple said a gun or whatever. When they asked the, the female agent from England, with the English accent, Simmons, mm -hmm. they asked her, and you know what she said? What? TARDIS. <laughs> but for, all, for you watching or don't recall that, the, the TARDIS is Doctor Who's time machine. Speaking of which, because you're a huge Doctor Who fan, um, and you would probably know this more than anybody else, actually. Are they gonna come up with a Doctor Who movie? It's been fifty years mm -hmm. since he's been on TV, and the only they've just done TV uh, specials and TV movies. Uh, I think they're overdue for a movie. I mean, it's about that time. It, it, yeah, it's way beyond that time. And it, it'll be a good time to do it since most of them are still alive. Um, the, the TV special uh, this past November mm -hmm. um, had quite a few of them on it, and that was great. And I could just imagine that on a, on a bigger scale. And they must be thinking about it because that special broke worldwide records. Wow. It was the biggest... It was the biggest simulcast show in history. You know, it was when they premiered it in England, it was on in the U.S. at the same time. Wow. All over worldwide, it was on at the same time, and that thing broke world records. So I'm sure they made a lot of money on it. So I'm sure they got to be thinking, let's make a major film. Right. And I can guarantee you it will not bomb. And the merchandising for Doctor Who, excuse me, Doctor Who, keeps growing. I, I keep seeing more T-shirts, more toys, more specialty items. It hasn't broken, quote unquote, pop culture yet. Like it's everywhere, everywhere in McDonald's commercials and such. Um, but in a way, that's probably what's keeping it alive. Yeah, it's it's a it's it, a because it's not overdone. It's just done well. They, right, right. That's the key thing. Done well. They're not milking it. Um, they're doing everything right about it. And uh, it was funny when I, when I was down in Florida a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we were. I went to Universal, and I saw the uh, the shows, and I saw the Terminator Two show. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each ride or show, we're all herded out into one room, <laughs> and that room is always the gift shop. Oh. <laughs> you know, work on your emotions right there. As soon as you're done with the ride, 
or the movie or the show, you're herded out right to this huge gift shop where everything of what you just saw is related in that store. Statues, books, hats, shirts, you name it, they got it. Well, I walked out of the T2 one. There wasn't a lot, but on the <laughs> right, it's on the right, guess what they had? What? Big section for Doctor Who. Oh, my goodness. That's your, that's your thing right there. And I was like, can you believe this? And then I get back to New York, and what did I hear two days ago? The guy who played Doctor Who, number 11, Matt Smith, mm -hmm. he's now going to be in the reboot of The Terminator. Oh, wow. Wait, are they doing it from scratch? Yeah. Schwarzenegger's in it, too. But, like, as if it never really happened? Like, totally, but same story, same... I heard it was a reboot, so I'm guessing they're just doing it from scratch. Wow. I heard it was a reboot because that's a that's the key thing. What you what you asked there is because it it, it 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 it's what you hear. Is it a reboot, a remake, or is it reimagined? Right. It's three different things, you know. Right. Reboot is where they scratch it, start all all over again. Mm -hmm. Remake is the same movie, different cast, right. and reimagine is a different version, like mm -hmm. um, Battlestar Galactica. You have the long green 1981, or you have the the new one with the hot sign on in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's reimagined. Reimagined, okay. right. What I heard, I heard it was a Terminator reboot. I'll check on that because, again, I just heard about it two days ago. But, um, yeah, I think it's interesting how they got the guy who was the Time Lord to be in the Terminator movie because, remember, the Terminator goes back into time. Right. So I think it's kind of... Uh, Ironic how they got the guy who was the Time Lord to be in this movie and to go back into time. There's, they're going to make some reference about that. I can't see them not right. jumping at that opportunity. Right. One of my biggest problems with the whole saga with Terminator, how they made Arnold Schwarzenegger the enemy and then made him a good guy in the future, like in, in like the last couple. I, I, that was a little disturbing for me. Well, it wasn't. he wasn't playing the same Terminator. Right, but... It was just a trick way to try to make Schwarzenegger well, a good guy. Which... Well, yeah, you gotta remember why though. At, during a term the, the, uh, for T two, mm -hmm. that was around the time he was getting am political ambitions. Mm. So he didn't want to be remembered as the guy who's always playing the bad guy. Right, right, right. Good point. Right. Well, he had to pol He wanted a polished image. You know, so yeah, it, it, it's, we're on top it's of hard. Our, it's hard when you want to be president. Yeah. <laughs>